Hey everybody, welcome to the newest episode of On That Note with Parker Whirling. Today's guest is a multi-instrumentalist, singer, songwriter, and producer based in the Bay Area. She's releasing her new album, Chapters of Zdenka, out on Brain Feeder Records, which is owned by Flying Lotus. She's even toured with one of my favorite bands of all time, Toro y Moi. And before we start, please make sure to subscribe to this podcast on YouTube or Apple Podcasts, however you listen to it. And please welcome Salami Rose Joe Lewis. No doubt in my mind that you have the best name of anyone that's been on this show, uh, Salami Rose Joe Lewis. And uh, the second question I have that I have to ask right now is, what did your parents say when you told them you were leaving your job as a climate researcher to pursue music? Oh, you know, <laughs> great opening question. Uh, they're pretty, uh, pretty bummed. Pretty, uh, pretty bummed. Well, yeah, that my family is a uh, very, uh, very much wanted me to be a scientist. So, I think, uh, I think they're a little disappointed, um, especially since I had dedicated a lot of my life to taking that path. Um, but over the years, I think they've become more uh, accepting of my chosen path. <laughs> Yeah, I which mean, is you've, nice. You've seen a lot of success, and uh, I would be hard pressed to say that it wasn't the right move because I, you've done so well for yourself, and I would think that having such a different background probably adds a lot to the music you make. I mean, your music is so um, it's so vast. You know, you have <laughs> you have so much uh, going on musically, but also you're telling this huge story that involves things like climate change and, you know, the world at large. How did you uh, how did you come about that style? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, great question. Well, you mean just having incorporating all these different elements yeah, was that something you always wanted to do, or did it just sort of happen as you were writing? For that album in particular, the one that tells that very specific story, um, I was writing the story first, and I kind of imagined this animated movie, and then I really wanted to score that movie. <laughs> so that's how that album came about. Um, and I've never tried something so story-driven like that before. But I do think that I like to use like long extensive metaphors to sort of talk about things and oftentimes fantastical ideas can be a good platform for that. Um, so yeah, but that album was a lot of fun. It was a experiment and I'm excited to do the sequel. <laughs> yeah, so the album we're talking about right now was Zadinka 2080, right? Which yes. came out uh, last year. Yes. Um, that was your first album off of Brain Feeder Records featuring <laughs> or owned by Flying Lotus, which is amazing. That's so cool <laughs> that you signed with them and such an icon. What was it like getting that call? And what's it been like being on Brain Feeder Records, putting out an album with a label versus your two previous albums, which you did independently? Well, actually, my first two albums I did on a label as well. Oh, um, oh, that's right, that's right. They were like a smaller, smaller label. Um, but yeah, that, that was, <laughs> that was a really crazy experience for me. I never really um, expected that to happen because I, part of the reason I went into production and making beats and things like that was flying, or a huge reason was flying Lotus and listening to him and being really inspired. So being able to even just have him listen to my music was a crazy, uh, mind boggling experience. <laughs> um, and I feel very fortunate for that. I think it has to do with my upbringing and being in the science world for so long as I never really thought I had much worth as a musician. It was always just kind of like a hobby that I really loved. Um, and so to have kind of outside validation like that was really um, amazing. <laughs> I still can't believe it a little bit, but 
I'm sure it was insane getting that text that he was like, yo, Flying Lotus likes your shit. Yeah, actually, actually I, I remember, remember distinctly uh, because uh, so, so basically, basically their a and R person for Brain Feeder was uh, like, like went, went to one of my first shows in like 2016 or something, um, and, and he, he had been a SoundCloud fan. fan. And, and I, I remember, remember he texted me like, like "Fine Lotus likes, likes your music, music. Like, like just that, just that sentence. sentence." And, and I, I just, just threw my, my phone, phone across the room. I was like, <laughs> "This cannot be. <laughs> this can't be true." That was very exciting. So crazy. So signing with that label must have been really interesting going into the actual like discussion process of it. And when I talk with other artists on here, some are independent, some are on labels. And usually the ones that are on labels, I ask them, you know, what, what do you look for when you, or what were you looking for when you signed with them? You know, like what advice mm -hmm. would you give to an artist who is being approached by a label? What should they want to get out of that? And what should they expect? It's a really important question and it's I think it's really complicated these days because in a lot of ways artists can really do everything themselves um, there's a, a lot of ways to go about that so I think it makes it more than ever a very complicated decision to sign with a label um, and I think it a lot of it has to do with what what kind of things you want to spend your time doing, <laughs> you know, like promotion and all that sort of stuff, um, social media, um, which if you sign to a label, you still have to do all that. But um, to an extent, there's things that the label helps out with, um, which makes that part, makes it easier to get more widespread without having to push as hard yourself, I think. Um, but I would say my advice to artists is to make sure to get a, a lawyer look over your contract. You're the second person to give that advice when <laughs> talking about contracts or talking about yeah. labels. It's, it's, it's unfortunate because um, lawyers cost so much money. And if you don't have that money, I... <laughs> It's really easy to be like, well, I can, I can look at this contract myself. I, I can do this. Um, but it's a really good idea to get a lawyer to look at a contract. It's good to think about, like, for example, my favorite part about Brain Feeder is they have, um, a, they give you a lot of creative freedom musically. Um, and I've heard that's not the case for a lot of labels. So I think it's really important to make sure you're not entering a situation where people are trying to tell you what to do musically and sort of shape you, because um, I think that can kill your spirit <laughs> and your drive. Um, so I've, I feel very fortunate with that in my current situation. But yeah, I think the questions to ask would be like, what is this label going to do for me and how is it worth them taking, you know, 50% of everything and controlling your music because, you know, they have the ability to shelf your album, <laughs> which is a crazy concept, you know. Um, so I think that is, like, really important for artists to, like, decide, okay, am I ready to relinquish control for the promise of collaborations and help and that kind of stuff if that makes sense <laughs> yeah it's absolutely a balancing act and deciding what your priorities are and I can't imagine a record label like brain feeder sitting and telling you the stuff you can and can't do with your music I mean all of their artists are so interesting and out there that yeah. they're not I can't imagine them being like, no, like this you need to have a commercial <laughs> pop hit on this one, you know? Yeah. And I think that's their their strong suit, you know, that they sort of let artists have that creative freedom and it's it's really special. 
So I want to talk about your newest single, We're Dumb, which came out December 3rd. It's off of your new album. Great name, by the way. Uh, it's off of your new album, <laughs> Chapters you. of Zdenka, which is out December 11th. What was the writing and recording process for this song? I know that when I was reading an article uh, about you in Huck Mag, I think that you said you... Um, kind of wrote a lot of songs during the sessions of your previous album, Zdenka 2080, and some of these songs uh, were left off of that album, but maybe came on this one. How did you decide between which ones were going to be left off and which ones were going to be saved for later? All of the songs that made it into the album were kind of the ones that fit the storyline exactly. Um, and the concept behind this record we're about to release is these are all the songs I wrote at the same time but like didn't necessarily fit the storyline so they're a lot more personal and um just kind of like diary entries honestly <laughs> um but like songs that I felt like I had to write for myself um just to release emotions and things like that um and just like the creative process but didn't necessarily fit the very particular uh, storyline that I had in mind for Zdenka. So, um, so yeah, it's a, it's a collection that I'm like pretty scared to release because it's way more personal than anything I've done and I don't really like sharing my feelings that uh, directly. <laughs> but I, it feels good to, to get it out there and... and uh, not sit on it forever. <laughs> How was that um, digging deep and getting vulnerable on your own songs is not easy. And I would imagine it is a different process from having this kind of big allegorical story and fit having to fit that. And I read that you kind of had like this comic strip panned out for that. Yeah. That must be pretty <laughs> different than deep diving into like very personal thoughts and feelings and experiences. Did you have a yeah. different approach between those two or was it all coming from the same place? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, for, for Zdenka, like the ones that made it to the album, it was pretty specifically like I would write the story and then try to write the music that I imagined would fit that and illustrate that story. Um, but with this more recent project, you know, it'd be like, I'd be going through something really intense and as a form of therapy, I guess, write music to just get through those moments. <laughs> I guess that's more of like the classic, uh, music approach. <laughs> Speaking of intense moments that you've experienced, uh, right after you released your second album, you had uh, a car crash that gave you some minor injuries that kept you out of work for a couple of weeks. And I read that that's kind of where you made the decision that you were going to start doing music full time. And that's when you wanted to leave your job as a climate researcher. And it also in Huck Mag, you said energy affects our brains and actions, and that could save our energy or saving our planet. We could have positive energy that's what could save our planet uh, Do you... you know it's funny i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off no no no, no. please go for uh, it oh. i think that was a misquote i keep trying to get that corrected because oh, it's, really it's imagery not energy oh yeah so the whole premise of the album like with the paintings and whatnot is that imagery affects our brains and so the the images that we take in sort of can shape our whole reality um and i i remember i keep like people hit me up and they're like energy yeah i'm like no it's imagery that's um, so funny but but yeah um that was why the artist character in that story um she was in a very dark place and started painting all these negative images and that was transfer transferring into the like earthlings on the planet and they were committing like very negative actions and stuff like that so it was like all about trying to convince her to make more positive images very interesting one word can change an entire quote 
<laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, it's funny. I always uh, thought that was a funny uh, uh, misquote. <laughs> so do you think that philosophy, the idea of, you know, imagery can save our planet, it can save each individual person, did that come after something like that car crash when you had time to think about what your life meant and what it was adding up to and maybe you decided you wanted to be in music because the imagery you could put out into the world could create a positive change yeah you interesting i never really put that together like that but that's an i totally could see that um i could be wrong you can tell me i'm wrong <laughs> by the way uh, i think i was where that came from was more a place of reflecting on the responsibility of like artists to like be I guess influencers and the fact that like and it's kind of hypocritical that I'm saying this because the album I'm about to write is or er, release is just all like very sad and kind of self-indulgent songs <laughs> um but I think that's the flip side of that coin where like I was really focused on the idea that like if you're given the platform where people are listening to your music, it's important to use that intent, like with good intention and try to be responsible with what you say and do so that you're not um, propagating uh, not very helpful ideas. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And I think about that a lot. Like I know, I don't know, as a, as a female musician in the industry, you get a lot of pressure to kind of paint yourself in a sexy way or whatever, you know, to sell records. Um, <laughs> and I think that um, this is just like one aspect of that whole imagery thing. But I think for me personally, and there's nothing wrong with like representing yourself however you want, but I think from in my personal journey, I didn't feel like it would be very helpful for the younger women that I'm trying to reach because what I'm trying to, what I hope is that I show them, oh, you can be weirdos and like you don't have to be, just because you want to be a musician, you don't have to be a model, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so that was like my, my hope, um, but at the same time, you get a lot of pressure from the industry to you know, there's those algorithms. If you post a picture of yourself, you're going to get more likes or whatever. So it's uh, just trying to fight against the the uh, imagery pressure <laughs> and put more positive things. Do you think maybe the name has something to do with that? Because the name, your name, Salami Joe Rose, or Salami Rose Joe Lewis, is so like, <laughs> like you got to be into the music you know what I mean like that's a name that isn't as <laughs> I, I love it but it's not as like immediately inviting and it right. kind of allows unless you love salami unless you love salami which hey a lot of people do <laughs> I, I love salami so I was excited to see that I was like she's got to be on it but I did want to ask one more question before we move on to the last five uh which is just five quick questions but I read that one, you opened for one of my favorite artists of all time, which is Toro y Moi. Chaz is amazing. Yeah. So sick. I was like, I freaked out when I saw that. <laughs> and I also read that um, you, when you were nervous on stage, you pulled out a dinosaur finger puppet in order to kind of mm. calm yourself down and just feel a little <laughs> bit more comfortable. Uh, I love all these tidbits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to do the research. I was like, wow, this girl's so interesting. Like, what was it like having to deal with coping with meeting your heroes? Because for me, I've already met some people on this podcast who I looked up to, and I know yeah. it's only going to get bigger and bigger. And I, I personally am going to need some, uh, some coping mechanisms <laughs> for dealing with people I've looked up to my whole life. Yeah, that is a great question. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> I don't know. I mean... I am like the most awkward person of all times, A, and B, get immense social f awkward phobia things, you know, like I have like a blushing problem, just can't stop blushing, I start stuttering if I'm super nervous, so 
not sure if I'd be much help, but I guess uh, one thing that I try to remind myself is like that people are people <laughs> and to not um, to not come on a little too strong. I think I come on a little too strong when I'm too excited and just try to have a real conversation and uh, not be as I try to be less sugary these days because sometimes I get I'll just and just freak out. <laughs> Put on the finger puppet. Put on the finger <laughs> puppet. Just start spazzing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That wasn't helpful at all. No, it, it was. <laughs> I, I, one, I'm going to make a finger puppet from now on. Yeah, that'll, and, uh, that'll do And just do start it. using that. Uh, but, but you're right. Oh, that's... I have another one, actually. Oh, g- give it to me. Let's go. Anytime I met someone that I was scared of, I would just ask them, like, I have a couple really bizarre questions that I just will ask, and it makes me feel more comfortable. <laughs> like what? Do you have any examples? Like, do you consider a hot dog a sandwich? That's a great question. Thanks. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. It's that a is real a real icebreaker. I feel like I'm hard. Pre- I want to say yes because it's bread and meat, but yeah, but it's it's kind of like not. It's kind of a, it's like its own thing. Right. Right. It mm. could go either way. What do you think? I really actually don't have an answer. That's why I ask. <laughs> You're just collecting data. That's the scientist <laughs> in you. This is my uh, my study group. There you go. I like it. It's going to be a long form study, hopefully in a few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get it's the whole a, it's essay. It's my life's work. It's my opus. <laughs> Maybe that should be your next concept album. Ooh, I'm on it. <laughs> I think there's something there. Well, I think that's going to take us over to the last five. I'm just going to ask you five quick questions, and then we'll be out of here. Cool, cool. Okay, and we can take our time. I say five quick questions, but it's like I've gone so long when I talk with people about this. (laughs) But the first question is Logic or Ableton? Logic. Sorry, (laughs) Flylo. Does he he use Ableton? Yeah. (laughs) There you go. So why do you like Logic versus Ableton? Have you tried Ableton? I've tried Ableton, and it's amazing for live, the live setting. So maybe Ableton's way better for live. But Logic, I, I think because I started out so many years on GarageBand, it's just I'm so much more comfortable with Logic. I'm the same. I agree. <laughs> cool, cool. It's very logical, you know. But Ableton, the most recent Ableton, I'm like, oh, my God. It looks insane yeah they they put comping in there which was like the huge problem before i feel like yeah 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 it's cool and it can bpm match oh that is huge that's i don't really love that about logic it's hard to just throw in something and it like easily translates it unless i'm totally messing something up which is possible (laughs) but actually you know i my main da it's not really a doll. I don't know. Is it a doll? But my, is I use this Roland MV8800 to like record and make some master. And only occasionally will I use Logic. Oh, really? So, so what is this? Is this like a hardware, a piece of hardware? Yeah, I can show you. For sure. Okay. Yeah. I've seen those in some videos of yours. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really cool. You just, you can do analog, MIDI. And mix and master EQ. But that's mixing, but you know. What I mean. <laughs> right. That's Throw so some cool. sauce on there. Throw some sauce on it. That sounds interesting. Yeah. I'm gonna have to look at one of those things. How how much did that run you? Sorry? How much did that end up costing? So they vary. I have a couple. <laughs> nice. But the first one I got was a couple hundred bucks. Like oh, I think it was like well, I got it from a friend. I think it was like three hundred bucks um that's not bad yeah then i i got a juicy one recently which <laughs> was a lot more <laughs> hey sometimes you got to make that upgrade you know but i made four albums on there so you know yeah worth it absolutely worth, worth it. it worth it so question number two is what's on your musical rotation right now Ooh. okay great question so my roommates put me on to this guy lito nebia from Argentina. Hmm. Amazing. Um, also, 
this woman Rosa Passos from Brazil. Super crazy. Interesting. You're in the South American、uh, realm. Yeah, but also、um, the、uh, gosh, I don't mean to plug my roommates, but Pacific U is like honestly one of the greatest musicians ever, and he just released an album. It's insane. Pacific U. Yeah, like a、uh, Y E W. Oh, cool. Yeah, his album, the Squeeze demo, is crazy. It's so good.、Um, and then my other roommate just produced an album for this artist, Liv, L I V dot E,、um, and that album is incredible. So nice. So Pacific U, the Squeeze demos, and、uh, Liv. What was the?、Uh, what's your roommate's name? Mejiwan. Oh wait, what is he? Sorry, I don't know what he's going by in the. Okay, yeah, yeah, Mejiwan, Mejiwan. How do you spell that? Uh, M E, uh, J I W A H N. Gotcha. And the artist is Liv L I V dot E, and the album is Couldn't Wait to Tell You. Nice. I'll be checking them both out. That's cool that you have two really creative roommates. Three actually. Chef Lee,、um, <laughs> he has amazing, amazing music. But、um, what's a good album? His Christmas albums are crazy. Oh wow! He releases a Christmas album every year. Well, hey, right on time. This is uh, <laughs> I'm ready.、I'll, I need some new Christmas music. This it's a little gnarly. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's about Santa, uh, like murdering people. Oh.、Um, <laughs> Just、nice. get into that holiday cheer. Yeah, you know how it is, right? Yep. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's that's really cool. You have a、uh, three awesome roommates who are making some great music. I'll have to check it out after the interview. So my third question is: Who's your dream artist or producer to work with? Stereo Lab. <laughs> Stereo Lab. You had that on lock. You're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, it's like it never never wavers. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've heard of them for sure. I know the album cover, the green one, but、yeah. I've never like listened to the whole thing front to back or anything. But I think it, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's it's life changing. <laughs> is there is there a song I should really pay attention to? Because sometimes for me, unless I hear that that certain song, it's hard for me to dive into like the rest of an artist's discography. Not gonna lie. You can literally put on any of their albums, <laughs> any song, your mind is gonna be blown. All right, I'll have to do that. <laughs> That's like one of the few bands I can say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're crazy. I do love.、Um, they have like this demo album, Electro, Elect.、Oh, I think they took it off YouTube, which was so sad. But what is it called? I'll send. I'll send you a link. But it's like、yeah. demos, and it's a little more like rocky and demoy, lo-fi, so good. Yeah, please send that. You know, I, I thought of a couple people when I was listening to your newest album, who I feel like you would just kill it with creating with. It's a、uh, Solange and、oh、Tom、God. York. Wow. I feel like those two people. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody get in touch with them. <laughs> I feel like just the keys, all your keyboard sounds. Just immediately, I thought of Solange's new album. It's like、Dang. this has to happen, and just Tom York, especially his solo stuff. I feel like you guys would have a lot of cool shit. Like Kid, like I hear your stuff, and it kind of reminds me of Kid A. Damn. Well, that would be amazing. Let's、Crying. fingers fingers crossed here. It's gonna <laughs> happen, and then you can introduce me to Tom York because he's yeah, my favorite yeah, yeah. of all time. He's、sure. just the absolute goat. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, question number four is, what do you think is a perfect album front to back? Damn. Maybe that stereo、uh, lab album. The,、uh, yeah. Well, honestly, Arthur Verigai.、Uh, what's that album called? The the main one, the one that everyone's been playing. It's <laughs> such a good. I don't、album. think I've heard of him. What's his name? Arthur Verigai. Hold on, let me pull up that.、Uh. My memory is so bad. What is it called? I think he only. I don't know. Did he only do one album? If you just look up either way, guy, the first album that comes up, I 
can't nice. see me. I can show you the cover, but I don't know what it's called. Maybe it's just called. Is it like this? I don't know. Have you heard the song that's like do 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 do? It's very know. possible. It's amazing, I've heard amazing it. Amazing song. You just killed it. I don't even think I need to listen to it anymore. <laughs> no, I know you definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's so good. Well, Arthur Verica's first album or whatever the first album that comes yeah, out. Yeah, 1972. Nice. Okay. That's on the list. Perfect album. A lot of, oh man, there's so many albums actually. I don't know. Let me not even think more. That's my answer. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's good to just have one go-to right there. <laughs> so the last question is a little, a little weird, definitely specific to you, but if you had to have a jam session with any scientist, who would Ooh. it be? Whoa. A jam session? Like as in like music? Oh, yeah. I mean, let's just assume they can play an instrument. Just who's, who seems like the coolest one you'd want to jam with. Damn. I'm curious. Well, I guess he's a mathematician. That counts. I'll count it. Okay, okay, okay. I feel like that guy, Von Neumann, because his brain was so crazy, like he just could compute the craziest shit in his head. I bet that would be such a fun jam session. Just to like, if he played an instrument, the way his brain computed mathematics. Yeah, let's put him on drums and see what rhythms he comes up oh with. Oh my God. Oh my God. That would be so sick. Just you on keys and him on drums. Like, I could listen to that for hours. That would be amazing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, 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 that'd be cool. That'd be cool. I also wrote that question knowing 98% there's, you're going to say someone, I have no idea who they are, <laughs> but... Oh, I don't, I don't know much, many scientists like that. Okay. Um, I was like, when I say I was a scientist, I was just working in a lab. I wasn't like a, didn't have a PhD or anything. It wasn't cool. I just picture you, I just picture you in a lab coat and like with a microscope and like that's... That That's did happen. <laughs> what, did it? Did it? Oh, there you go. There's, so I'm in this band in the Bay called Science Band. And before it was formed, I was working in this lab. And my bandmate, Simi, who was like kind of ran the lab. And she didn't really, um, like, we didn't really talk, you know. We were just like working. And then one day I came to work. And like we're both wearing lab coats, as you said. And <laughs> she was like, came over to me and she was like, close your eyes and open your hand and I was like what um and she put a she just I opened my eyes and there was a salami in my hand and she had gone to one of my shows over the weekend and she didn't know like I was a musician or something and she the way she expressed her like that she had done that was by bringing me some salami that's incredible <laughs> and then sorry to bring it all back, she joined our science band as a scientist. So we have like a experimental jazz band, and then like scientists come and like speak some science over over the music. Holy shit, that is so cool! It's a cool time. <laughs> Are there any? Uh, you guys have any albums or recorded music? We're working we can... on one about the okay. story of the water molecule. H O H. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just doing an onomatopoeia ho, 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 there. Ho, ho. <laughs> I love that. What a it's great name. Thanks. Well, I'm excited Thanks. to listen to that. I'm excited for your new album, Chapters of Zdenka, which is out December 11th. Everybody needs to go check it out as soon as it's out. I hope you like it. It's very sad. I'm, hey, I'm sorry in advance. Who doesn't love a little bit of you know cathartic sad music? Tragedy in their life. <laughs> exactly. You got to have a little tragedy. Well, Salami Rose, Joe Lewis, thank you again for coming on the show and talking Thanks about your me. song process and, you know, your new music coming out. I'm really excited. Everybody needs to go listen to it. And uh, once again, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You love. Thank you again for joining me for another episode of On That Note with Parker Whirling. If you haven't yet, please make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts, and you can even leave a comment down below to let me know who you're listening to. On that note, I'll see you guys next time. Hey,